What am I doing nipple deep in cold murky water while everyone else is enjoying this gorgeous day on top of the water getting a nice tan? If only all those dry tan people knew what was stuck in the mud six feet below their untanned buns. Right here? Yeah. Today, I'm at a very specific spot on the Guadalupe River in Texas, hoping to find something super valuable and sentimental that belongs to my new friend Curtis. I got an email from Curtis a few days ago telling me he lost his gold diamond Aggie class ring. Leave a ring emoji in the comments below if you are an Aggie. I decided to accept this challenge for four reasons. It was lost in slow, shallow water. Curtis took very good notes on where he lost it. It was lost recently, and the sentimental value of an Aggie ring is way higher than its face value. It's not uncommon to see Texas A&M grads wearing their Aggie ring every day for the rest of their life. I lost the Aggie ring. Been all day on the river, and it stayed with me all day until we got to the end. We were throwing a skipping ball across the river and felt the ring go off as I let go of the ball. So here we are. If I do find your ring today, this will be my third Aggie ring that I've found. So I wouldn't feel too bad about losing your ring, man. It happens all the time. In addition to Curtis's lost ring, I'm about to get started looking for a second lost Aggie ring, which I'll explain in just a minute. Kind of point out the area. I would uh, start right here about this route, and you're gonna head almost dead center of those two cypress trees there. Okay, gotcha. You're right in there. For the best chance of finding Curtis's ring, I used these broomsticks and this old dowel rod to grid off the area, and then I realized we had a huge problem. And cans everywhere. Can, 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 can. Because the beer cans are so big and the ring is so small, the only chance I have of finding the ring is to get all the cans out of the way so my metal detector can locate that tiny little ring. Once I started to pull the first can out of the river, I actually lost a lot of hope right there just because it took over a minute to pull that one can out of the thick mud and sticks at the bottom of the river, and there were like hundreds of these cans. At this rate, it would take over two days just to clear out all the cans from this small section, and we don't even know if Curtis's ring is in that section. About 30 minutes north on the same river system, I'm about to start hunting for another lost Aggie ring, but with completely different equipment. This is Dan, whose son's friend's girlfriend Morgan lost her gold Aggie ring at this boat ramp recently, but thankfully it was hooked to a pair of car keys. Which increases my odds of finding it with... Ugh, this! I can, I can barely hold this thing up. I already have my phone out of my pocket because uh, you don't want to get this too close to anything important or electrical. This magnet is so powerful that it would absolutely destroy any electronic that came close to if it. If we don't pull it up with the magnet, I have my scuba gear and I got my metal detector. So I'm pulling out all the stops. I really want to find the ring for you, man. I really uh, hope we can find it, it today. Oh, hope this thing is lighter when it's underwater. All right, here we go. You ready for this? Three, two, one. <laughs> Sounded like Uncle Jack did a cannonball. All right, let's pull her up and see if we got anything. Hey, we got a square with a circle in it. So we know the magnet works. Throw it back in, see what we can pull up. <laughs> did you see that? I almost got shot in the face with that stream. That was cool. It's gotta be here-ish. Oh God. That was a slap. But what it is, is it's stuck on all the weeds. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna pull up a freaking forest. It's heavy. It's weeds. What do we got? Nothing, it's clean. Whoa! Oh man, got more weeds. Good nice. Clean as a whistle. Well, I'll tell you that much. Those keys aren't gonna stick to it when there's that much weeds on the bottom. I don't even think I can metal detect through this. At this point, my optimism was fading fast because this giant magnet was my secret weapon and all I had to show for it were a couple of tired biceps. The more area we cover, the better chance of pulling it up. Hey, that's something. Oh, it's the, uh, it's the same thing as our pontoon. It's the powder pin bim for the bimini top. The magnet works. I was starting to worry there for a minute because we're not pulling much up. As long as we get over those keys, I think we'll pull it up because look at this. So it's gonna keep on going, guys. 
Back at the river while I continue to search, Curtis tells Scott something interesting about Aggie rings. You get your, your ring once you're an upperclassman. Uh, once you graduate, you flip the ring around so that the world can read your class year. What do you mean flip it around so you wear it backwards? Yes. yes. I didn't know that. So sit so that you can read the year on the bottom okay. of your class year. When you graduate, you turn it around so that when you show it to somebody, it's upright. You know, the blood, sweat, and tears, the, the student loans, all the, the time it took to get it. Precious metal, it's gold. I got a small diamond in the shield. Hopefully Dallas can find it. I'm slowly clearing out all the metal trash from this triangle, and if I don't find the ring, I'm gonna keep moving in the direction that Curtis threw the ball. All right, I'm gonna clean out this triangle, and if I don't find it in this triangle, then I'm gonna move one of these posts to make a new triangle, and we're just gonna keep on going until the sun goes down, or if we find the ring. This guy throws in and gets 50% of all the finds that I found just in the first throw. <laughs> you got this bolt, some hot rock. Fishing tackle. And then uh, Ryan just found another so thing. we got a nail. Okay. Really nice nail Nailed right there. it. Well, Sinker. the magnet works. It so does work. All we need is a pair of keys with a ring on it. Yeah. I still think we have a better chance of finding it with the magnets, but we're all pretty worn out at this point. We're not giving up. About two hours later, we gave up. We all forgot about the ring for 10 months. So we're back at the same spot as we were like almost a year ago and you guys check out how low the water is. So to give you perspective right down here toward the right side of the ramp, that's where we were floating in like eight feet deep water. And now it's just dry land. So I got my land detecting gear here, I got my shovel, I got my little gadgets on my hip, I got my metal detector. Well, that was cool, did you hear that? And also holding the camera is Ryan from the channel RJ32. I got his son, Jake. And of course we've got Dan. This time we're gonna make an exact search zone and then I'm going to spiral out from the center of where we think it was dropped and hopefully find it before the sun goes down. This is absolutely crazy, you guys. See where this red line kind of tapers off here? When I was looking at the drone shot, the water line was actually up here before the red line started to fade. We were floating right over here, guys. This is crazy too, look, look at this. I remember getting underwater like seven feet deep and actually feeling these things here, which is crazy because I remember feeling the ledge drop off and I was searching around right here. Never found it, but look at this. We got a whole day here to search, no water involved. This is exciting, guys. So I'm gonna go grab the stakes from my car and we're gonna stake out this whole area and then we're gonna find that ring. I asked Dan where he thought the ring was dropped and I staked off the search zone based on his best guess. My guess would be over here. My plan is to start where Dan thinks the ring was dropped and then spiral out from there, eventually removing every metal target from the search zone. We got it all staked off, guys. I'm gonna get the metal detector out and let's just start covering the whole square. Just like in Curtis's ring hunt, this place is loaded with trash. So I'm getting this pair of keys in my buddy's gold ring and I'm gonna see exactly what target ID my detector reads so I can look for just that signal. It's all over the place. 25, 18, 13, 14, but it's kind of close to the 14, 15 area. All right, well that's enough information for me to get started. Let's just go ahead and start digging. Between the low visibility and all these beer cans, I'm not making much progress, but I just thought of a plan to get me in the exact location of the ring. If you guys see a little pebble up there, like the size of an Aggie ring, and then a bigger one too, like the size of the ball that you're throwing. Okay, yeah. He's gonna run to the parking lot and grab me a pebble the size of an Aggie ring, and then I'm just gonna try to reenact exactly what Curtis did when he threw the ball, and I'm gonna see where the small pebble lands, and I'm just gonna go search that area. All right, I'm gonna search right there. I need my mask. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Check it out. What'd you get? Cabela's Fish Eagle CS2. Oh, that's a good one. I don't fish, you guys, but I find fishing reels, so that's pretty cool. And it was in that triangle. I already detected this area without those little markers before, and now that I had the markers, I'm finding everything in that triangle that I didn't find before. So, could have easily been a ring. Let's throw this off to the side and keep on looking, guys. Upriver, I just got my first hit on my metal detector. Let's dig it up and see what it is. 
It's big, it's deep. I think it might be a beer can based on how Give a beer strong of a signal it is. Yeah, beer can. Well, you know what's good about this? If there was somebody that came to detect this, it didn't pull all the targets, which means that these keys are probably still here. And we've uh, done one more piece of cleaning up the lake, so that's good too. I've got a target here. Could it be a keychain? Ah, foiled again. I think today is just a numbers game. We gotta pull all the targets we can, and that's gonna give us the best chance of pulling it out. There's a nail in that. In this? Board. Yeah. yeah ah, yep, yeah, sure enough. Got a target here. A little ASMR action for you there. How old is that can? Budweiser. My basic method of metal detecting is to sweep my search coil until I get a hit, and then dig some dirt out and scan it with my little pinpointer here, which only beeps when the target is within about an inch of the pinpointer. Since the search zone is now on dry land, I'm making a ton of progress removing all the metal trash, and I was feeling really good about the hunt until I looked up and saw a team of six people in uniform waiting for me at the ramp. My heart sank. The next move is, to be honest. What do you have anything to say to all the all the happy people who are dropping their cans in the river? Well, other than it makes it a lot harder to find my ring, just don't do it because it's <laughs> trashy as hell. <laughs> Here's the crazy thing. I went to my neighbor's house yesterday and I ran my metal detector over his Aggie ring to see what the sound was like so that I could come out here and search for uh, for the same tone. And uh, it turns out it's the exact same tone as a beer can. So that didn't work out too well. We found a lot of cans. Sadly, if I was to go over the ring, it would sound the same as a can so I had to dig all the cans. All right, treasure fam, let's get back in and keep on looking. We're that much closer to finding the ring. Check this out, dude. This might be the best thing I've done all summer. <laughs> wow! Ready for this? When the team of guys in uniform approached me, I was sure they were there to shut us down. I thought you had a big pair of binoculars from over there and you saw the drone. Oh, no. 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 <laughs> Once we started talking, though, I found out that they were the Corps of Engineers. They just happened to be in the area and they just wanted to make sure I had a permit to fly the drone. Then we told them about the lost Aggie ring and they wished us luck on our hunt. Whew, that was a close call. Awesome. Awesome. Good to Thank meet you, you Sam. Have a great day. Nice to see you, too. I thought for sure they were going to tell us we got to stop. I thought we were all going to get tickets. <laughs> Bottle cap. Oh, it's a little oh. fishing weight. Look at that. That. That is a dinner. It's a coconut bra. One problem with metal detecting in a trashy area is something called target masking, which is when the treasure is right next to a big trash item like a beer can, the detector will pick up the bigger trash and not the smaller treasure next to it. The only solution is to remove all metal targets. deep one. My hand is like worn out from digging those. After hours of freezing and almost wearing my fingers down to nubs, I got a hit on my detector that sounded much different than any other target I'd heard all day. I was so excited to find Curtis's ring, I was literally shaking. But I had to keep my poker face so I wouldn't give away the big surprise. This is so far the coolest thing I found today, I'd say. Um, what do you think? I think I can get this thing lubed up and get it working again? You know, where there's a wheel, there's a way. <laughs> I guess the, the coolest thing I found today, though, would be this. What? <laughs> Dude! <laughs> <You> crazy bastard. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, so... Sweet, man. Yeah, is that the right one? It's got my name in it. All right. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty kick-ass. I pulled that thing out and oh, it felt so good to hold that thing underwater. <laughs> so yeah, man, worth the worth the two and a half hour drive. Oh hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Look at that. <laughs> had a two it had a two week vacation from you, but yeah, it's back on and back where it needs to be. <laughs> that feels good. That is a good feeling, man. Getting that ring back to Curtis was super special, and I'm really hoping to find Morgan's ring for Dan. We got about an hour left of sunlight. Let's see if we can make it two for two. There's the egg. Oh, there it is. Oh, can. That's the hard thing, is it? These beer cans, they scream at you on this detector, and they're the same signal as, like, good stuff. When there's beer cans, it's a challenge, but that's how I found the last gold ring, was I pulled out all the beer cans for the whole search area, and eventually I found the ring. So we're doing the right thing. Looks like somebody shot it with a 22 or something. Hey, hey. Camera, camera. I'm, I'm recording too. This is all. This is all live. Hey, get over here. You got the camera rolling? Rolling. Okay, I just popped this bad boy up. Let's take a look and see. It's a key fob. If it's the right keys. It's the right one. Oh. <laughs> oh, 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 look man. at that! Oh my gosh. I think I got a spare key back from my truck. <laughs> I bet you it still works. <laughs> there you go. Awesome, I really appreciate it. Oh man, we were just talking about how it's gonna, we're gonna be here all night long. Wow. And we just, I just pulled it out. It was next to one of those huge cans. Remember, this is the hole that I dug for the huge can. Yeah. Right next to it, I had another target, there it was. I just wrote my wife and said, no luck yet. <laughs> I can go tell the core guys that you found it. Yeah. Dude, I can't believe it. That feels good. It only took us nine months to get this dang pair of keys. Now let's take a look. How many holes do we have to <laughs> fill? Hey. You ready? What I have? Oh, he found them. No shit. Oh, holy shit. Oh, no shit. Holy shit! Pretty cool, huh? Oh, wait, hold on. I'm going to add Morgan to the space time. Hold on. <laughs> Did y'all have like a diver out there? Or? Yeah. No, it's on the shore, son. The water's gone. The, the guy that looked for him last time, he, Dallas, he came back he out. Really low? Well, yeah, it's all dry. Holy shit. It's <laughs> amazing. Oh, that's a good feeling, guys. Jaquay. Hey, so my name is Dallas. I, I've been out here a couple of times now. Yeah, if you could get your girlfriend on the phone, that would be sweet. She, she's on here now. She's on here now. Oh, sweet. Morgan, hey, I'm Dallas. We just found something uh, that's been sitting underwater for close to 10 months, I think. Check it out. Oh my God. Oh my God, I know what it is. Oh my God, I'm gonna throw up. <laughs> <laughs> it was under 10 feet of water before and now we came back 10 months later and it's just look at this Oh my god, thank you so much You're welcome I give it up, oh, I lost it <laughs> Thank you for the opportunity man uh, I know it sounds weird but uh, this was a lot of fun for me <laughs> Oh my god, like you so hot. Up on it. We're gonna pass it off now to the to this guy who was so kind to reach out to me in the first place and he's gonna get it back to you. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. All right, good to meet you guys. I'll talk to you later. Thank you. Congratulations, right, guys. guys. Oh, I love that. That's, That's the so best. so awesome. Oh. Dude, so proud of you for just like not giving up because that is a lot, a lot of, of holes, dude. Yeah. And all of that garbage, that. Oh, that's a that's good exciting. feeling. That was excellent. Really appreciate it, man. This was a lot oh, of fun for me. I appreciate y'all helping us find these. This is a huge success. Well, that was an absolute blast, Treasure Fam. If you guys had even half as much fun as I did on this hunt, uh, please leave a like and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell if you want to see more videos like this coming out all the time. I'll see you guys very soon on the next adventure. <laughs>